Hi class. Um, today I'm going to show you how to do double pamphlet stitch with a hard cover. So first I'm going to work on this cover. Um, I'm going to show you two slightly different versions of it today. So I have this that's already cut and then this hasn't been cut yet. It must be a different colors. Does it matter? They're just different brands and they're going to be covered anyway um, with decorative paper. So it doesn't matter. So I remembered ruler and the board this time, which is exciting. You don't have to use the magazine anymore. All right, so I've taken these and I've marked them. So I'm ready to cut. Okay, I'm gonna put the ruler on the marks. Get my cutter. Now this is gonna take a few cuts. It's okay. Be patient. Don't press too hard or you could hurt yourself, right? Just go nice and slow. there I can feel it okay so I got a nice cut it's nice and smooth all right so just take your time on it don't rush that part okay so now to get other one by the edge mark. Now this is going to be easier if your knife is sharper. So you want to always sharpen your knife. Now if it's a little bit funky, you can just sand that. But it's going to get covered, so like all of this kind of, just kind of get rid of it. There we go. That's better. It's going to get covered anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. Now. Yours, for some reason, don't come with this bit. You have to use a pliers to pull it off, okay? But mine come, has a little thing that does it for you. So you stick it in, slot. And it breaks it. And you wanna be careful you don't want to just leave this lying around. You want to make sure you dispose of it properly. Okay, so now I have the next blade out. So now we have a sharper blade. Let's see the difference. Even with a sharp blade, it still takes time, but I can feel that it is going through it easier. Okay. So you want to put them next to each other. Make sure that they're matching, that they're the same. And let's see. So if you go like this, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good this direction. However, that is not very good actually. See, it's actually a lot thinner. So that's why we do this. So I actually I'm gonna to wanna to, I'm gonna try putting um, putting the ruler upside down this time so I get a closer contact with it and see if that also makes it easier. Yeah, having it on this side, it means that the bottom is right against the board and it's not being lifted up by the cork. So it's actually easier. 
So I recommend you guys flip your wheelers upside down. Okay, finally, that feels good. Yes. So for this one, it's a little bit tricky. Just wanna get, make sure we get the math right. So these boards are 13 by 18 centimeters. I measured them already. Now you want um, the paper that's in them to be smaller. So let me show you an example. This book here with a hardcover. Um, as you can see, the paper is smaller than the board and it makes it so they don't stick out past the board, which is what you want because you want them to be protected. You don't want them sticking out. So it's about a half centimeter, right? This is a half centimeter that you want on all sides. So that means the pages have to be a half centimeter smaller and a half centimeter smaller. So that means if, let me just check to make sure, this one is, this weighs 18 actually. This weighs a 13. So we want the pages to be 17. And we actually want them this way to be the same. And that's kind of confusing, but even though it's going to be shorter here, it actually is a little bit longer in there. So you want it to kind of stick out a little on this side. So because of that, it ends up being the same. So it's the same this way, but it's a half centimeter um, on each side. So a centimeter shorter total in the height. So let's look at some paper for a second. Um, It's gonna be something like that, right? And then it's gonna be in there. So this way needs to be 13, this way needs to be 17. It's really gonna be 26 by 17 with each piece of paper and then it folds in half. Let's get four sheets of paper for each book. So we're gonna make two pamphlets, right? So we're gonna do two of each. You can do more than two pages, means you can do four, three, five. I mean, you can do however many you want. As you recall, the best way to fold these was one at a time. So I folded them all and now stick them together. So two, two signatures of two pages each. And let's just check to make sure how it looks. So it's going to be like this, right? It's going to stick out in the back a little bit, and then it's going to look like this. And then in here, the spine's going to go around it. Okay, for this one, um, the double pamphlet, I'm actually going to show you a four hole stitch. So um, here is the diagram of it. So you can always pause it. Okay, so we want to do four holes. That means we want to divide um, the page accordingly. So let's take a look at a ruler. Uh, it's at 17 inches. So you don't want it too close to the edge or it could rip it, but you kind of want it close-ish to the edge because um, it kind of gets a more stable book binding. So let's even go in, I'm gonna do one and a half, I think that looks really nice. One and a half on each side. Okay, so that means in the middle here we have 14, and I need to put in two more holes. So that means 14 divided by three, four and two thirds. So four and two thirds, that would 
there. Let's just mark this on the ruler. All right, there we go. So four and two thirds, four and two thirds, four and two thirds, and then a little at the edge. So it's not, it's not like you divide it up evenly, right? It's a little bit closer on the edges, which looks really nice. So we're gonna make what's called a jig. So this is already the same height as um, the page, which is really useful. So let's put it up next to, right into the edge. Okay. Um, and then what you can do is you can just cut a little hole. Okay, and this is called a jig. So you can clip it on. Take your awl. Take your other one, line up your jig. Now, the other thing is you can just do them both at the same time. That's the other option. It just depends how many sheets you have. If you end up having a lot of sheets, then you're not gonna be able to do them all at once. I could have since I'm only doing four sheets of paper, but it's up to you. Okay, so that's how you get all your holes to line up. Now for the stitch, we want to take our thread and again we're going to do three times the length of the spine. one we're definitely going to start on the outside. Now, uh, if you have like a paper cover and you want your thread more hidden, you could have started in the inside. But for this we definitely start on the outside because we're going to put a cover over it and then the thread's completely hidden. First of all, we start on one of the middle holes. And leave a little bit at the end for tying at the end. Let's um, tape it down so we can pull it tight as we're working. Okay, then you go from one middle hole into the other middle hole. It's in the same signature. Pull it tight. It's really important to do that. And then, you go through the matching hole. So you always go through the matching hole on the other side. Pull it tight. Now you go down to the bottom. And then you want to go through the matching hole in the other pamphlet, the other signature. We're going to pull it tight. Always pull it tight after you go through a hole because otherwise at the very end you're going to find it hard to remember like what's the order of the strings. Okay, so then you come back up to here. So let's just pull out this hole. And then into the other side.
Remember not to stab through the other one. So pull it tight, pull it tight. Okay, good. Now you go through this hole, this one, and then through the matching hole where we started. Now the top hole, and if you can do both holes at the same time, that's even better. Can you? There we go. Okay, pull tight, then go back through this hole. Now we want to just check, see all three are there, and all three are there, and pull it tight. Take the needle off, and then you can take the tape off. Tape really helps, guys. All right, and now we're gonna do the same thing we did before with the box knot, so the shorter one is under, and the shorter one. is over. All right, we tie it, we tie after we're done tying it, we cut it. As you'll see, this is made of cloth and it's called book cloth. And the reason is when you go like this a lot, it can stress that point. And so if you make your spine out of paper after many years, it could rip. So what you're supposed to do is use book cloth or like book leather. Um, I have this stuff in the studio, it comes in rolls. And the way you want to do it properly is when it's, if you need some, is you just cut off a little strip of what you need. Then the next person cuts off a little strip of what they need and then what they need. And that way you don't waste any. Um, if I had sent you all home with a big chunk, you would cut off what you need and you'd be left with like a weird shape and it'd be very wasteful in the end. We probably would run through all of the book leather that we have in one project. And I want it to last the whole semester and not waste it. So in that situation, what you have to do is if you want some of this for your project book, you have to get it from school. You can cut off a piece of it from the classroom, um, or you can you know, tell me how much you need and we can cut you off a piece. However, for this test book, you don't need to use it, right? We can just use paper or we can use tape. So it's up to you if you want to use tape or if you want to use paper. You know, even just like a piece of that colored paper is fine, just so you learn how to do the process. And then when you do the real one, if you want some of this, um, then you can get some and you just cut off the exact amount that you need. We're gonna put a piece of tape in the middle and then we're gonna cover these book boards with this paper. So this is just, um, craft paper that I happen to have and I painted on it and I also did a little bit of rubbing with graphite on it so it's just um, decorative you can use anything you have around the house uh, you know you can buy decorative paper if you want but you don't have to you can um, make your own you can take old art like old prints or old watercolors or old drawings that you have lying around that you always kind of liked but they didn't really work as their, a piece on their own they make the best book covers. Okay, so now we gotta figure out how thick we have to make the spine. So to do that, we're gonna take um, a strip of paper, just like a little strip like this, and a pencil. So you wanna pull this out from the book. Um, a half centimeter, so that's what it's going to be. Half centimeter. Um, and then the spine is going to be from this edge. Wrap it around to this edge. That's how wide your spine has to be. So let's give that a measure. It's one and a half centimeters. Okay, so we have one and a half centimeter spine. 
So I'm going to show you two books. I'm going to show you um, one I'm going to do with this cloth and one I'm going to do with tape. So that way you know how to do it with tape and you also know how to do it with cloth. And basically the process for doing it with paper is the same as with cloth. So it needs to be wider than the one and a half centimeters because what it's going to do is it's going to actually go over like this and then this paper is going to go on top of it. So that's how that's going to work. So we want it to be, um, I want it to go to at least let's say two centimeters on each side. So I actually want it to be four centimeters wide. So I'm gonna mark this four centimeters. Okay, then how long do I want it to be? Well, I want it to be longer because it's gonna have to be taped under. Just to give it an extra two centimeters on each side. 23 because it's not exactly just give it a little extra so we're gonna go 23. Okay. see i'm only using the amount that i need that's it i'm not even cutting any more off than i need i want all this to still be useful now as you might recall i told you guys that it needs to be a, a one and a half centimeters wide. And then, let's get the other part. Take some of that. All right, now you're gonna Mark this. Now, as you can see, there's a reason this person who's very smart used paint pen because you can see it. All right, we're gonna see if this marker shows up a little better. Yeah, it does. And we're not so worried about it getting on the boards because the boards are gonna be covered, so it doesn't matter. Okay, I'm actually gonna use one of these scrap paper with my gluing so I can just move it away right away and it doesn't make a mess. So going out from the center So now we want to get rid of this right away because this is gluey, get everything dirty. I might just put another one down to help us. Okay, so now you want to act pretty quickly because the glue could dry. So you just put it down in the lines. You want to take your bone folder and we'll push it down. You want to also make sure that you get it on the edges. 
then kind of push it in right in there. So push it down against the boards. And on the other side, you also want to push down so that you get kind of this nice edge in here. And then push it down also. All right, so now we want to put this under weight so it can dry. Okay. Now I'm going to put a lot of weight on it. And let it dry. Okay, with my other set of boards, I'm going to use tape. So it's the same idea as with the, the leather, but you don't have to add any glue. It's very sticky. Just get it a little bit longer. Okay, and this is a little bit trickier because, you know, you can't like... If you try to put down the right marks on it, it'll get stuck. Mark it there. Okay. Okay. And this time, it's the same idea. Except for it sticks by itself. So, you know, it's just a test book. Whatever kind of tape you have, you can try it. And then this side too. Okay. Let me show you how to do the end paper. So I'm gonna use these, some old um, drawings that I did for my classes. So we're gonna find the place that we like. I want to be like this, I think. Decide on the amount, I think half an inch, or half a centimeter is what we've been doing this whole time. So, but it can be whatever you want. Like it can be, you can have um, it be like that if you want. Well, maybe we'll do a centimeter actually. Okay, and there's a centimeter. Okay, so we hold it. Then we go the outline where we want it. Okay, for this one, I want it so. centimeter. To the edge of the board. Okay, now we have to cut it and um, we want to give it about two centimeters on all sides to be able to flip over. So Now, this doesn't have to be exact, it's going to get covered up. But if you don't want it to be too long or it gets like bumpy, you'll see. What do you mean by that? And now, there's one other thing you have to do before this is ready, and that is to 
miter the corners. Okay, you're gonna cut off a piece right here at the corner. You don't wanna go all the way to the edge or the board is gonna show, like the corner's gonna peek out and that looks bad. You don't wanna go too far, like you don't wanna not cut it off because you have this bulgy corner where there's too much paper and it gets really lumpy. So you wanna cut it really close to the edge. We're gonna do a half a centimeter. So you can just go in, mark it a half a centimeter. So you're basically gonna cut it off like that. Okay, and so you can just snip, snip. Okay. You get this kind of shape. All right, we'll do this whole thing again for the other one. Alright, so those are our covers. I'm actually going to put down another scrap paper for the gluing. Basically what you have to do now is glue all of this. I'm going to do, we're going to do one sheet at a time. Just so that way you can do them both, you glue them both at the same time and then you let them sit there, one's going to dry out probably. Okay, so putting your finger down in the middle, always start from the middle out. Whatever you glue, just make sure that you get a nice even coat. It doesn't wrinkle and move around and you get all the way to the edge. So you don't want this to move. If this moves while you're working, it could get glue on the front side, right? So you wanna be really careful. I think I'll put this over now and use the other side down. There's a little time, but not too much. Now we're going to do the top and the bottom first. So you're going to pull it, kind of push it using the bone folder against the edge, and then pull it down, kind of starting in the middle and going out because that way you can avoid wrinkles. That's basically the main advice for everything with this. You start in the middle, go out, always. Okay, make sure you go along the edge to give it a nice crisp, kind of like point. Now, you wanna go in here and push down that corner. So in case you can't see it, it's this right here. It gets pushed down right there. Okay. And then you take the side one, okay, and get the edge nice and flat, and then pull it over from the middle out. Sorry, I'm like, I didn't like the way the corner came out, so I'm just gonna pull it in a little tighter. There we go, that's nice now. Sometimes you just have to kind of Stop, pull things in tighter. Okay, and then on the top edges, and then the side edges. This just gives it a nice crisp edge. It's not lumpy, it's not bumpy. It's got that nice sharp corner. Okay, so check out those corners. Look how nice those are. You don't see any book board. They're not bumpy, they're not lumpy. They're just kind of pulled in like a present. And that's what you want. All right, let's do the other side. This is why we do test books, right? If you're gonna do your test book and you find that your, your glue is just drawing too fast, then you need to add a little water. But if you're finding that it's fine, don't worry about it. Just take your time to get it right. 
I don't like how I did that, so I'm going to do it again. That's much better. Pull the top, middle out, nice. Get the corner in, tucked in. There you have the cover. So now we're ready for adding in our pages. And the easiest way to do this is just to glue them in like this. And then it closes like that. All right, so first we wanna do is glue one page, put it down, and then we're gonna glue the other page and put it down. Okay. So when we're doing this, if we just put glue right here, it's pretty easily gonna get into the other side. So we wanna grab the scrap paper. That'll protect the ones underneath. Again, starting from the center out. So I know that I got a little bit of glue on this page underneath, so I'm going to take another one down to protect the book. And this, which is gluey, can be gotten rid of. Okay. So you want it to be half centimeter on all sides, right? Now, as you can see, this paper is wrinkling. That's because it's computer paper. If you use, you know, the good quality paper, it's not going to do that. Okay. Um, you can rub this down. Like, you can just take a little piece of paper. Kind of rub it down like this. You can also use your bone folder. Get the edges down really nice. You don't want like wrinkly edges, right? Now this paper is a little bit bumpy because of, um, see what I just did? I just ripped it. That's because it's computer paper. That would not happen if you were using the other paper. But this is a test book, so we're not worried about it. Okay, so now we have to do the other side. So you can adjust it now, you know, get it more even. And you can just it over that way, okay? Now, again, this wrinkle is happening because it's computer paper. It would not happen with your nice paper, so that's just a test, so we're not too worried. Okay.
right now I need to put this under weight, um, under books so it can dry. I'm gonna stick in scrap papers between the covers. This is gluey, not that one. Clean one. That way it'll protect the moisture that's in the cover from getting into the pages. And if you don't do that, the pages could dry like really wrinkly. Okay, now I'm gonna tear some paper down for the other book. Uh, I'm not gonna use computer paper this time. Uh, you saw some of the troubles I was having, you know, with the ripping and the tearing and the buckling, all that kind of stuff. Won't happen with this paper. This is Reeves BFK. It's the same paper that you guys have um, in your kits, except for it's a different color. So we have this at school. So um, if you do need it for some project, it can be gotten uh, at that time. This time around, I'm going to tear paper instead of cutting it. I wanna show you how to tear paper because it is a different look. It gives you a soft edge. For example, in this book here, the sheets of paper have very nice, more like soft edge. And you get that by tearing instead of cutting. So cutting with the knife gives you a very sharp edge. If you want a softer, more handmade look, which might go with the concept of your book, then you're gonna tear it. Okay, so just like um, cutting, you have to measure. So we just have to wanna keep this edge. This is the, the deckled edge, then we can. Just cause it's, it's kind of fun, why not? So to do it this time, I like to flip it upside down so that it gives you a better contact. And um, you then pull the paper like this while you walk your hand back on the ruler. Okay. So we can do that with the other two as well. Together. Can line it up. There we go. And you can do two at once. Now we have to make it the other way, which is twenty six. See, and I can't tear it after a certain point. So then don't force it, just put it under. All right, so like before, I'm gonna do two signatures. I'm gonna fold it one sheet by one sheet. Okay, so I made another set of pages, just like I did the last time, but this time it's with um, the nice paper, Reese BFK. Um, and just like last time, I cut out my covers to the right shape that I want. 
this is dry now. It was under pressure for like an hour to dry. Now, as you'll notice, I did not put this on even, right? It's not exactly even, but does it matter because I'm covering it with paper? And I'm also gonna do something a little different this time. So I just wanna show you all your options, actually. I'm going to, instead of, cause I could just glue it down like this. Right? What we can do, let's bring this out about, two centimeters. side two centimeters <clears throat> so two and a half centimeters in, right there the edge. We're actually going to cut this like a flap now. Sometimes it even takes two cuts to get through the paper. It's so thick. Okay. So we're actually going to go in like this. And then this is gonna get glued on like that. And then we're gonna use what's called an end paper. And then we're gonna glue it on like this. So this is a way to get this paper being different from this paper. If that's what you want. This can also be a decorative paper. This could be a painting. You know, you could cut up something like another piece of art for this paper as well. You gotta glue up this guy. So, as you recall, start from the top. I'm trying to do this super up close. So, see, so you want to like really pinch. Pinch it down, okay? Then you can bring it over this way. See, it covers that side. I don't like the way this one's coming out, so I'm gonna fold it in even more. 
and then fold it down. And I'm much happier with that. This one too can use a little bit. All right, now we're gonna put in our text block. So we need to use scrap paper. we feel about. I might have to push it more back in. Okay, that's good. Now we have to do the other side. I'll just stick it on the other edge like this. like the way it sits so yeah I'm telling you good working with good paper just makes your life easier everything is sort of going where it needs to go so I might want to just let's see what I'm doing if he doesn't rip um, Okay, so there's only one thing left we have to do now, and that is add the paste papers. And they go like this. So now we just do the same thing as before. Whenever we glue something, center out. So this is called an end paper because it's going in the end of the book. So these end papers, I, um, as you remember, the board was 13 by 18. So I um, actually, I made these 12 and a half by 17 and a half. So um, minus a half a centimeter on all sides. And basically, that means that it's a quarter centimeter all the way around. So you could make it smaller so you have more of the color front cover showing, absolutely. Okay. Let's do the other one. Well, it's still wet. You can just adjust it until you're happy with it. It's 
the little crooked so I just pull it a little this put it under weight again. So we want to put some more scrap paper in between the cover and the pages so that it doesn't, the moisture from the covers don't get into the pages and make them wrinkly. Okay, let's take a look at the two books. 